Okay. Now on this page here, I want to put in my um, list of tables. And you can see that uh, it's above chapter one. And the order of events is list of tables or figures, list of tables or figures, list of abbreviations, those three in any order, and then table of contents. But remember, they're all in the front matter. So all those still have to be numbered in the Arabic form, at least in the small Roman numeral form. Oh dear, I'm getting the two neighboring countries mixed up more or less, give or take. So I'm going to click in here and put in another, uh, another I can put in a page break here. Sorry, I'm being really silly, people. I beg your pardon. I can actually put in a page break here. Control enter or insert page break or breaks page break. So what I'm going to do is just tap enter there. That goes on to the next page. That says chapter one, very crude. So I'm going to say, no, you're normal. The only place I should have chapter one is here. This thought it was a heading one, see? Got too big for its boots there. So I'm going to put in a list of figures. Pick any one you like. Oh, might I type it there? Okay. Tap enter to get that onto the next line. Delete that. Now, this also has to go into my table of contents unnumbered. So I'm going to make it a not numbered heading one. Now in here, I go along to references again, and I go to insert table of figures. I click on insert table of figures. It says table. So I have to change that to figure. And I click on OK, and there they are. There's an extra enter there too. I'm going to tap delete. All right, I'm going to put a page break in there. And you can see it's happily numbered page four. Now I'm going to put in a table of tables, but I go to the same link that says table of figures. They should have said insert table of dot, 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 you know, but I think people might have confused that with table of contents. So I go to table of, oh, good, I want tables. Yes, thank you very much. I shall have tables. There they are. I now type in table or list of. I've seen a lot of theses with list of tables, list of figures. That's okay. What did I call the other one? Ah, oh, list of, okay. List of tables, that needs to be a not numbered heading. All right, so I've got them both in. That's very good. I've put in my list of acronyms and initialisms. I've put in all sorts of other things in my um, start of <laughs> figure 13 on page three. In my front matter, now I'm going to put in my table of contents. Sorry. So I'm going to click on here and put in another page break. Because remember, it's all in the front matter. Now I go to table of contents, which is on the left-hand side of my um, ribbon. And I have a choice of two. And the difference is only the heading. Do you want to call it contents of table of contents? Everybody wants to call it table of contents. Don't choose this one. It gets complicated. So I pick this one. And I put it in, and there's my entire table of contents. And I scroll to the top of my table of contents. And I get rid of the stray enter here. And it's given it its own heading style. Oh, okay, fine. Here it is here. Very good. But now, I'm not going to make that a no numbering heading. Why? I don't want table of contents to appear in the listing. All right, so I have to mimic the formatting. What was my formatting here again? It was, um, ooh, sorry, it was, where am I? Um, my font, as per usual, and uh, what size is it? I want to see the font size. Yeah, it's not, oh, there it is. <laughs> Arial 16 bold, oh dear. All right, so I select that text. Oh, I don't have to select the text. I beg your pardon. I go here, click on the down arrow, modify. Oh, it's Cambria. I want Arial 16 and black and bold and enter. And now it looks like my other headings. So here's everything put in here. But whew, I can see some terrible things happening. Have a look at that. This is stuck out there like a sore thumb. 
and I can see that my TOC2 has been selected here. What changes am I going to make to this and where? Well, I'm going to nudge it in a little bit. Let me see where chapter one is. I'm going to nudge it in a little bit and I'm going to make the changes in the style. So I go to TOC1 and I use my eyes and I see, hang on, that one is at about 1.75 centimeters. So I click on the down arrow here, modify, and I'm going to go to paragraph. And my indenting is only 0.39. Nope, I want that to be 1.75. Okay, and I want the after to be zero. Okay. Now, here's a trick for you. I'm going to make the right one centimeter tucked in. And I'll show you why. Click on OK. And click on OK. And now that's very nicely seated under that. And what I did with the one centimeter was this. I prevented, oops, Daisy, I have to actually tap tab there. Must be on page one. That's odd. That's very peculiar. Chapter three. Why does that say one? Edit footer. I'm going to go here, format page numbers, and say whoops, continue from previous. Okay, previous has a problem. Previous says 22. And this says 1. Right, so I have to go to page number, format page numbers. Oh, and say so continue from previous. See what happens when you're not looking. Okay, let's grab another random page. It says 29. Surely that should be more. Okay, well, people, let's go back to um, list of figures and go up. Sorry. Go down to my table of contents, right click, and now I go update field. I can do that there, or I can click on here and go update field from here. And I'll get update page numbers only. Yes, please. So let's see if chapter three is improved. It certainly has. All right, so they all look pretty ordinary, pretty good now. Okay, that was scary for a minute. All right, so this, where were we? Let's go back to where we were. So you can see now that um, this one, this is TOC2, which is this one here, has not had this text go right up to the page number like this one has. Okay, but what I need over here is a um, hanging indent. So I'm going to be a bit crafty and I'm going to, I've clicked in there. Now let's grab the hanging indent, which is, oh, honestly, you've got to be so finicky. And I'm going to move it over to about there. And now I'm going to go to TOC and say update to match selection. You've got to have your mouse clicked in the right place. Then you go update to match selection. Okay, there are two tabs in there for some reason. So let's get rid of one. So you can see that that's updated nicely. But this is too far out. So I'm going to take my tab and I'm going to move it to about there. And I'm going to take this, which is my whole paragraph indent, and I'm going to move it to here. Hold down your Alt key to be able to manipulate it nicely. All right. And I can say TOC, you can see it's changed, update to match selection, or I can go in here now, because you can see that that's still too far over, and I'm going to modify it. I'm going to go to my paragraph settings, and I'm going to say that should be at one, like all the others, whoops, and click on OK, and click on OK. Now that tucks in really nicely. So if I turn off show hide, that's what my table of contents will look like. You can adjust it just to whatever you prefer. But as long as you do it in here, or if you do do it here, make sure that you update this to match that selection. All right. I think this is far too wide. So I'm going to go to TOC2, and I'm going to make you single line spacing. Just click on that. 
and I'm going to go to TOC3 and I'm going to make you single line spacing as well. And that looks a lot better. Okay, so heading one's really sticking out like a sore thumb, but maybe I like it like that. Okay. These haven't got numbers, obviously, because they're in the appendix. It's entirely up to you if you want to make this a little bit narrower. I'm going to go click in here. I'm going to go to TOC1. Whoops. And I'm going to say that this might be one and a half line spacing. Okay. What you've got to look for is how it carries on to the next page. This is not so bad, you know, but sometimes you get chapter three stuck there and the rest of it's on the next page. Manipulate it with this. Manipulate it with this. All right, so that's doing the TOC, that's doing the list of everything, and we can possibly now update these because you can see their page numbers aren't crash hot either. I've right clicked and I've gone to update field, update page numbers only, yay, that's better. Right click, update field, update page numbers only, yep, that fixed itself up as well. If you want to change the formatting here, I'm going to go not to hyperlink, which it wants to do, because of course you can click on this and go to that page. I'm going to go to table of figures style. Remember, that's what you clicked on at the top. And I'm going to modify that and say, I want this to be one and a half line spacing. That's going to affect your tables and your figures. See, that'll affect the tables and the figures. One other thing I wanted to show you, let me just go to pages. Oh, that's just the contents page looking really weird. Don't think that it's happened here. But very often, um, it's a bit awkward because it's not happening here. All right, let me go in here. No, that's not going to work there. I just want to show you what to do here. Let's say, um, okay, I'll do this. It's not a good example, but how often don't you want um, Heartland systems? Let me just see if it'll work here. I'm trying to give you a really good example. You may have a heading here. See, that's not going to work. Right. All right, you may have a heading here that says history. And you don't want it to be included in the table of contents so you don't have it in your styles. You see, what you're going to do then is maybe go bold over here. Now, you actually want, uh, let me just put in a bit of text here. This is what you call hacking. See what's happened? History has stayed behind on this page and this text has moved on to that page. Now, many, many, many people are going to put a page break in there. I wouldn't. I would click on history and go straight to paragraph and go to line and page breaks and guess what? I'm going to glue it to the next paragraph by clicking on keep with next. There it is. Because if I remove all this gobbledygook I've typed here, it'll come back up with it. But if I had put in a page break and I had try and remove this, look what's going to happen. It's just going to stay there. So that's the problem, you see. Whereas keep with next, we'll have it pop up because it's only sticking to this paragraph here. So use keep with next instead of um, uh, page breaks in future. Okay. All right, so that's putting all the thesis together and that's applying all these items here that are in your um, style. It may seem long, but people, the time you're going to spend scrolling through here and applying it to your thesis is worth every second of it. And if you want me to check it for you, I do. And as I said, I do this privately. So contact the uh, Office of Research or contact me and say, all I want you to do is this.
and I can do that for you and I have to give you an invoice, which we, a quotation, I should say, that you submit to the Office of Research and it gets approved and all this type of thing for a complete, flat out, everything job. <laughs> you know, the works, it's uh, $1,200 uh, less work. You know, it goes down, 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 down. So it's up to you how much you want me to do. A lot of students do this before they um, approach me, which is perfectly in order. And I got one recently. Um, that was pretty well formatted. And in the end, we had to go and do a little bit more formatting to it. And it's all the fine tuning, you see. The whole problem with this is you have to know how to fix the mistakes or fix the blues or fix the issues and fix the areas. And formatting the tables is a nightmare. Formatting tables can be very, very controversial. And, and how long does it take for you to format them? Uh, it depends on how much you've done. Um, I think Amanda, I'll just stop sharing for a second there. Um, is Amanda with us? No, it can take up to two weeks, three weeks. Okay, and we should do it at the towards the end here yeah, when we get approvals from supervisors. The draft is ready and everything is done here. Yeah? That it, that's right. I do have one candidate at the moment, and I'm sort of working on his uh, chapter by chapter. And and oh, in some cases, you do the first four chapters while you still the the candidate is still writing, and also sometimes they want to see what it looks like. So they send me the first four chapters as maybe separate four separate files or whatever and give you a sample of what it looks like. And then when you get it back, you say, yes, that's what I want. No, I want this. I prefer um, um, my captions to look like this. I prefer, so, you know, as long as it's consistent throughout. Like one thesis that I just did, the uh, candidate wanted two papers embedded in there. Not, oh, PDF. That was what I was going to talk to you. Please don't let me forget. Uh, wanted uh, them actually embedded in her doc, put into her uh, thesis, but not as PDFs, as Word document, but wanted two columns, you see, and wanted the tables and the images to be in landscape. So um, I had to, I did that, you know, for her because it was a, it's a, you've got to judge where, how to put it all in and where to put in the column breaks. And then I had... So you, prefer, you prefer we should send uh, chapter by chapter, send to the complete one? It's actually what you prefer. Okay. Uh, who am I talking to? Farooq. Farooq. Okay, yes. Farooq. Yes, it's up to you. It's entirely up to you. If you start off like that and you decide, look, I think I'll rather um, just send the whole lot, then you change your mind, that's fine. Because I've That's got three fine. supervisors and they're looking at different chapters in the final stages. We've got seven chapters on all together. Three oh, supervisors okay. looking at different chapters. So yes. I was thinking if I get approval for one chapter or two chapters to go ahead, I can send that for. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Just contact the division of research, first of all, and, and um, uh, see, see how your funding is setting out, you know. So how many chapters do you have all in all? Seven. Seven, yeah. That's the average. Seven. Yeah. Sometimes, recently, I did one that had uh, ten really uh, smaller chapters, but they were ten different t ideas. You see, so mm -hmm. it just depends. And then sometimes we have a heap of appendices, and that's where the issue of um, <laughs> PDFs come in. You see, because uh, you've got to put in your letter of letters in exactly as they were done with the CQU header and the whole works and oh dear, that can cause some problems. So what uh, I suggest to the candidates is to take a screenshot of it yeah, and sure. put it in because using insert and going to object and picking an object and choosing a PDF is not as cute as it looks. Even when you say create from file, Mm. What happens is that the person who gets the thesis then has to click on the PDF and then it opens the PDF in a completely separate different, document. Different one, yeah. No yeah. matter which way you put it in. So a lot of people have had their PDFs. They've re-scanned them actually as PNGs on their uh, scanning machine. The machine can either scan it to a PDF or to a um, PNG. They've re-scanned them as images and put them in as insert picture. It works. Yeah, uh, I'm having the problem I'm having. I'm using the inbuilt in Word uh, document for the referencing. I'm using mm. APA, but it's not showing me the correct referencing. So I've been trying to manipulate everything, but it's somehow it's not showing. 
something around. So uh, mm. that's a problem I have. So I request him a supervisor. I will fix that towards the end. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you do those things last, you know, yeah. putting in table of contents, figures and, and tables. And, and you know what else I do with a thesis? And you people can download this from the university's uh, software center. And it's a program called Perfect It. And it's mm. absolutely fabulous because I run a dummy document through there and just play and see what it does. It finds places where you've done online with a hyphen, online without a hyphen. It finds places where you have gone World Health Organization, WHO, and later on in your thesis, you've done that again. Yep. And then it says, no, you don't need W, you just need WHO here. Yep. And it then generates a table of of what it calls abbreviations for you and uh, it's in text version and then you just format it and put it in you know so perfect it is a great tool yep. it picks so up I'll, all sorts of bugs i will be i will be a pain for you because you have to fix all my references <laughs> <laughs> that's so okay just I might say, hand. next time I'm on your campus, let's meet and we'll enjoy a cup of coffee. Yep, sure, you know? sure. I'm in Melbourne based. So. Oh, my favorite city. In yep, yep. Whenever you come in. Yep. I do love Melbourne. The weather is just dreadful, but I do love Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does it say the same. Oh, Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for your help. All right. Okay, Farouk. Yes. Back on mute. And if you people have uh, any questions anyway, man, you know, I don't mind um, answering questions. There's nothing worse than not knowing what to do and wishing you did know, you know. Uh, just field me questions. I'm not going to say that's five cents or anything like that. I only... Uh, so you prefer emails or we yeah. can text? text you as well? Oh, you can text me as well if you like. Um, here's my mobile. Whoops. Thank That's you my, my personal mobile number. Yep. And just Thank text you. me to okay. that as well if you like. And um, um, it, 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 you know, an email works just as well because my personal emails do come up on my phone. Yep, sure, sure. My yeah, home, my much. work Thank emails you. don't. Just, just the last question from me: Where we can yes. get the recording of this session? Um, well, what I'll do is now it'll it'll record this and it'll render what they call yeah. render to a MP3 four, and mm. I will ask Stuart to put it up onto um, um, Moodle for you in the meantime. And what I'm going to do uh, in, in the coming months is make individual videos of this whole session. Okay. Not this session, but individual videos on yep, the topics yep, that yep. I've discussed through here with examples. And I'm going to be putting, and send that to Stu and Tash and whoever and get them to put it up onto the Moodle site as well. So that- Any, 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 any time frame we can get that? Um, it takes about this long. A, a recording will possibly take about uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes to record, to oh, render. Yeah. And um, so it should be by uh, this next week. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, sure. And you like, will send an email out or? I'll get Stu to do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Stuart, Thank you. I'll get him to do that to let you and know. And do we have any follow up sessions as well with you or this will be the only session? Um, we'll talk to Stu about that as well. Yep. You know, okay. there's, uh, there are follow-up sessions, definitely. Um, uh, not a problem at all. I can do topic-based follow-up sessions as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you so very much. For example, Thank only on table of contents. But scrounge around in that uh, academic, uh, uh, academic um, computing, academic learning center computing Moodle site. There are quite a lot of resources there. If you do want a resource and it's not there, we'll put it up, but I'm going to be sending all those resources to the division of um, um, uh, research to put up as well. I'll just have to rebadge them actually. Ingrid, okay. so will they go up on the um, ALC computing Moodle site or on the research division Moodle? Uh, this recording will go up on re on research. Okay, right, thanks. I see Stuart's joined us. Thank you, Stuart. The this recording will go up onto the research um, site, and then um, when once I've I've worked on the others, they will uh, I'll get Stu and team to put them up onto there as well. At the moment, there are a lot of resources on C ALC computing, including the files we've used today. So you can experiment with these files. Yeah, sure, sure. Ingrid, I've got another meeting at 2 o'clock. Is that okay if I leave now? Yes, is it 2 o'clock okay. already? 
Oh, no. I mean, in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Oh, so. oh yes. <laughs> okay. No problem. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Lovely. It was lovely having a session with you. Thank you. Yes, lovely. Lovely talking to you all as well. Okay, bye all. Bye, everyone. Thank you.